Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our 13th air law lesson with regards to Canadian aviation regulations. We're talking about aircraft equipment uh, requirements in general. We'll talk about some more specific things in subsequent videos. Let's begin with some of the things that we have to carry on board the aircraft. In this case, we call it a flight authority. It's a general uh, term for a certificate of airworthiness. And what the certificate of airworthiness says is that when the aircraft was manufactured, it met the specified requirements of, a, of the certification. So in this case, we can see here, this is actually a special certificate of airworthiness. It's a different type of flight authority um, in that it doesn't meet any specified airworthiness uh, requirements or it hasn't been tested anyway. So this is, in this case, it's a home-built aircraft or amateur-built aircraft, it's called. The uh, certificate of airworthiness has the registration on it, the manufacturer, serial number, and, uh, and you have to carry this on board the aircraft. It is valid whenever the aircraft is operated and maintained in accordance with it. Additionally, you need to carry an aircraft flight manual. Sometimes these aircraft flight manuals are also called pilot operating handbook, pilot operating manuals, any number of things. But if it is required by the type, you are required to carry it on board. It's actually a very good idea for you to get into your POH or your AFM on a regular basis because it gives all sorts of interesting information, limitations about the aircraft, describes its systems, its performance. For your flight tests, both your recreational and private, and especially commercial flight tests, you'll really want to know this manual inside out for the aircraft that you are flying. Here's something interesting. All markings and placards have to be installed as required. All these markings, they're shown in the what's called the type certificate data sheet. You can look that up online if you're interested. We don't really need to go through it. But there are a number of uh, placards that are required. And these are required, and they're often missing on aircraft. And often what happens, a pilot brings an aircraft in for maintenance. And maintenance goes through, and part of their annual inspection, they must look for these placards and make sure they're all on. And if they're not, they have to replace them. Let's talk about unserviceable equipment or broken parts, let's just say. If an aircraft may fly with unserviceable equipment, provided it does not affect the safety of the flight or is required for some other reason. So if you're flying during the day and a nav light's burned out, well, that's legal. It's not required for the day, but it is required for the night. Same thing goes for a radio. Let's just say the radio is broken. Well, you can fly without that radio. It's not required for the safety of the flight but you might have some issues getting into some controlled airport. However, when we talk about something like a flap, all the flaps don't work. Well, that is required for the safety of the flight. That is a, That was part of the certification when the aircraft was certified, therefore the flaps have to be operational. Same thing goes for the engine, propeller, kind of major systems. So if it affects the safety of the flight, it must be repaired. If it doesn't, it can be deferred. Let's review. We require a flight authority, such as Certificate of Airworthiness on board. We have to have an aircraft flight manual or pilot operating handbook. All markings and placards that are designated in the type certificate data sheet have to be in place, and all equipment that affects the safety of flight must be serviceable. Okay, uh, since we don't need to do much of a re review, uh, let's talk about some sample test questions. Which of the following is not required on board? A, flight authority. B flight plan, C, aircraft flight manual or pilot operating handbook, or D, all markings and placards. Well, we just talked about this. We talked about a flight authority we need. We talked about a flight manual, and we talked about markings and placards. So what's remaining? B. Okay, that concludes our lesson on aircraft requirements. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on our next lesson.